Right now is a pretty amazing time to be a guitar player. There's amazing gear that's really accessible and it's easier than ever to get some really amazing tones. And it seems like as more and more new gear keeps coming out, our pedal boards just keep getting bigger and bigger, which isn't a bad thing at all, but maybe if you're just building a pedal board for the first time or beginning to serve at your church, it does bring up the question of, what is actually necessary for me to get a great worship guitar tone? So today we're gonna to answer that question and also touch on how we can get the most out of the essential pieces of gear. So unsurprisingly, the first thing that we're gonna need is a guitar and an amp. And so when it comes to the guitar, really you can make a ton of different guitars work, but I'm a big fan of having a guitar that has some clarity to it. Personally, I use this Fender Telecaster, which has single coil pickups, which are great as far as clarity goes, but nowadays you can find a lot of great humbucker guitars that also are a little lower output and almost sound a bit like a single coil, but just a little bit beefier. But anything that will really give you some of that clarity will be great. As far as amps go, that's a little bit of a bigger question. Maybe we could do a whole nother episode on amps by themselves, but for the sake of this video today, I just wanna to touch on kind of the essentials that we're gonna look for in an amp. And for me, I like to look for an amp that can take pedals well, especially in the worship genre. We use a lot of wet effects with our delays and our reverbs. So it's nice to have an amp that has a little bit of headroom that can take our pedals well and not get too overly distorted. So a pretty standard set is either a Fender style or a Vox style, or even the two of them together in stereo is a pretty classic combination. And then there's the whole world of amp modelers, which that could be a whole nother video as well. But today I'm actually going to be using the Strymon Iridiums, which personally are my favorite modelers to use. I'm using two with that exact setup that I just talked about. So I have one of them that's set to a Fender style and I have the other one set to more of a Vox style amp. When it comes to your clean tone, it's really easy to fall into the trap of dialing it way too clean and a little too thin and trebly, and then trying to make up for it later with pedals. But I'm a really big fan of dialing in a clean tone that is actually usable. It's an actual tone that you would use on a Sunday because then our starting point is way up here and the pedals that we're gonna add on later are just adding on to what's already a great foundational tone. I will say too, full transparency, it's a little weird for me right now to be playing just my clean tone with no compressor because my compressor is actually one of those things that beefs up my clean tone a little bit more and I absolutely love, but I'm leaving it out for right now because I don't think it's essential. I don't think it's totally necessary for a great tone. So we're gonna revisit this a little bit later, but for now I'm gonna keep it off. But now that we have a great clean tone, the next thing that we're gonna want to add on is an overdrive pedal. And this is where there are a ton of options and it can actually be a little bit overwhelming in deciding what is the right overdrive pedal for me? What's going to be the best bang for my buck? I like to just find an overdrive pedal that's going to sound like my amp. And when I turn on that overdrive pedal, it's gonna just sound natural, almost like my amp is just being turned up a little bit more. So if you're looking for more of kind of a one size fits all overdrive pedal, I would definitely recommend something like a blues breaker. It's not gonna to be too heavy, but it's gonna just sound really organic and transparent. It's just gonna sound more like your amp as you add it into your signal chain. So I actually have a blues breaker style on my pedal board. This is the Jet Pedals Lamb that I'm using. There's a couple extra functions with it and you can dial in some presets and it, it does a little bit more than just one standard tone, but I'm gonna dial in kind of a medium overdrive sound that I like to use. And again, it's just that blues breaker style that's gonna sound a little bit more like my amp. <laughs> So 
So believe it or not, I would actually say that this is enough to get you started playing on a Sunday. Maybe if you're playing more rhythm, you're playing some more chords, not necessarily a lot of lead parts or anything like that. Just having a guitar, an amp that's dialed in well, and a well dialed overdrive as well can get you some great sounds already. But after overdrive, the next section that I'd say is pretty essential is going to be a delay pedal. There's all kinds of different delay types out there. There's analog, which is gonna be a little bit darker, more gritty sounding. There's digital delays, which is gonna be more of kind of your pristine, bright delays. And then there is tape, which is kind of a nice middle ground. There are way more other types of delays too, but I think those are kind of the three most popular. But like I said, tape is my favorite because it feels like it sits kind of in between the two. Sometimes analog can be so dark that it gets washed away and it's a little hard to hear it in a mix where digital sometimes can be a little bit too much. It can clash with your playing a little bit too much. So analog's nice because you do get a little bit of the brightness so you can hear the effect, you can hear the repeats, but it also degrades as each repeat goes. So it does kind of sit underneath your playing and it just creates this really nice ambience. So I'm using one of my tape settings on my Strymon timeline and here's what that sounds like. Now I am using a timeline, but I wouldn't say it's necessary by any means. There's a lot of great delay pedals out there. If you're looking for the absolute necessities when it comes to looking for delay, I think finding a delay with tap tempo is going to be really important because if you're playing multiple songs a set on a Sunday morning, you're gonna to need to dial in some different BPMs pretty easily. So a tap tempo can be great. Past that, I would say if you can find something with stereo, that is definitely gonna help a lot, but I wouldn't say that that's quite as necessary as maybe something like a tap tempo. Another nice wish list item with delays too is something where you can program the beats per minute. That way it's just even more accurate and you can just cycle between presets and just immediately be ready when the next song starts instead of having to tap it in. The next essential that we should look for next is going to be reverb, all of our favorite effects. <laughs> There's a crazy amount of different algorithms, different types of reverb out there. Probably the most popular, I would say, in the worship space at least, is kind of the cloud setting that the Big Sky made famous. And honestly, it's great. I love it, but I would not say that it's totally necessary. It's not on every pedal out there. You'll see it on the smaller version of the Big Sky, the Strymon Cloudburst that came out relatively recently, as well as the Jet Pedals Revelation. That's another one that has a pretty similar algorithm. For today though, I wanna focus on the plate setting. It's gonna be a lot easier to find a reverb pedal with a plate sound because it's such a universally classic reverb type. So as we're talking about reverb, I think it's important to ask the question of how much should we use? And really that's kind of a loaded question because I think it depends on the part, depends on the context. Are you playing rhythm? Are you playing lead? There's different times that call for different amounts of reverb, but for right now, I wanna dial in what I would probably consider to be a standard lead guitar amount of reverb that could generally get you through an entire Sunday morning. Generally, when I'm dialing in reverb for a lead part, I try to add in a decent amount of pre-delay so that I can hear the note that I'm picking and it's not too washed out by the reverb. But other than that, I like to dial it pretty bright so that it's gonna be heard and not just wash my signal away too much once I'm playing with the rest of the band. And I actually do add in a decent amount of decay because it does tend to just sit under, similar to the delay actually, it does tend to sit under my guitar as it kind of fades into the background and it creates this really nice amount of wash and ambience. <laughs> Thank you. 
So really we've got all of the essentials we need when it comes to building a great worship tone. So let's hear it all together. We're gonna have our guitar, amps, overdrive pedal, delay, and reverb all together, and that should give us a pretty good worship tone. So let's hear what that sounds like. I alluded to this earlier, but there are some other pedals that just make life a lot easier as a guitar player and other effects that are just super fun. And I mentioned earlier, one of these for me is a compressor. A compressor is probably as close to necessary, at least for me, as I could get. I can't say that it's totally necessary because you can dial in great tones without one, but it really does just add so much consistency to your notes and your playing and your picking. And it just adds kind of an overall roundness to your tone, which just makes everything sound better. It also can be really beneficial to have either another overdrive pedal or a boost pedal, something that'll help you build your dynamics as the rest of the band is building as well. It can be really nice to have a little more versatility in your back pocket. So maybe if you're playing a lower song, lower dynamics, it's not quite as full band and big, you can have a cleaner overdrive pedal on or for a song that does build quite a bit, or if you have a lead part that you need to stand out a little bit more, you can just add on a boost and have that option at your feet. So I do have a couple extra options on my board, but I would say for me, if I'm going to add one more option aside from just a standard overdrive pedal, I would go for some sort of a boost. So this gold Mosky Klon clone is more of an overdrive pedal, but I have it dialed to be more like a boost and I have it at the end of all of my overdrives. So here's what that sounds like if I were to just add that boost on top of my overdrive. <laughs> in our budget and we're just looking for the next upgrade to look for, I would recommend looking for a reverb pedal that has some sort of preset switching. It can be really helpful to switch from kind of that standard lead guitar reverb sound that we dialed in a little bit earlier today and switch to maybe like a swell setting. That can be really nice to have a little more versatility, almost similar to the overdrives like we were describing earlier. Having the option to increase and decrease with the rest of the band with our reverbs can be really nice as well. So if we have something just at our feet where we can quickly swap to a nice washy swell setting and then quickly swap back to kind of a driving lead section, that can also be pretty nice as well. So I have a quick example dialed in with my cloud presets. Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> Now, once you have these essentials incorporated into your rig, modulation effects are another key ingredient to creating a great worship guitar tone. So you should check out this video right here where I walk through everything you need to know about modulation effects and using them in a worship setting. So go ahead and click up here and I will see you in the next one.